Jackie Lee Price for Shadow Boxer UK. Today's guest comes all the way from uh, Frankfurt by way of Spain. <laughs> Naomi Manns, how are you doing? Hi, thanks for asking me. I'm fine. Good, good, good. So, how are you doing? How is life treating you? I hear you're in sunny Spain. Oh my God, life is treating me well. I'm truly blessed to have the opportunity to train alongside Katarina Thunder. <gasps> And um, we've been here for three weeks now. We're going to leave next week, unfortunately, but it's been a great time. I always, I'm always very thankful to be here. It's great. So you're boxing on the 7th of July. You don't have an opponent yet, but you are boxing. Is that what you do then? Do you go tend to go to Spain for your sparring? Yes, of course, because it's hard to get good sparring partners over in Germany. And... Katarina and me, we are good friends. So anytime somebody of us is fighting, we help each other out. Yeah, that's great. Nice one. So, yeah, listen, so you, are you actually going to be boxing in Germany on the 7th or are you going to be um, boxing in Spain? Um, it's going to be in beautiful Germany. Ah, OK. So listen, I wanted to um, talk to you a little bit about, before we go into your professional career, I want to talk to you a little bit about your amateur career, because I know you had an amateur career. Didn't you box for someone that is, was it CSC Frankfurt? Yes, it was. Like, I had to change the, the team quite often because, um, you know, it's, um, I always wanted to have the best trainer and, you know, um, sometimes when I felt that they were not treating me nicely, I just left immediately because I'm a person, um, I'm going to stand by my word and if somebody's not treating me well, I just leave, you know. And yes, I do have 90 amateur fights. Um, I think I won 80 of them. I lost five and I had five draws or something like that it's been a while <laughs> wow brilliant though brilliant you're talking about um your amateur career i mean it, it yeah unfortunately it did happen to a lot of females where they weren't always accepted were they are you a sort, sort of person that will like you say just push through and no one's going to stop you achieving what you want to achieve yeah nobody's ever going to stop me so yeah you know I like to handle things on my own and, you know, um, I'm very good at being alone, you know, because um, boxing is a male dominated sport, right? And I had a couple of trainers which are quite old fashioned. So, you know, they were just, um, they were rather, they rather train boys than girls, even though some of us are even stronger or better than the boys. They don't care about that. You know, and yeah, so yeah. that's why that's one of the reasons um, that I started competing in pro boxing, you know, because um, I was able to choose the, the trainer. I was able to choose where I want to be. So, yeah, it's quite good. <laughs> and what sort of led you into boxing? Because, like, you know what it's like. It's supposedly not a female thing. <laughs> but we loved it anyway. <laughs> so who kind of got you into it? Who was your inspiration? Actually, it was my older brother. I do have an older brother. He's just 15 months older than me. And he was, to be honest, my first role model that I ever had. And he started boxing. And my mother and I would pick him up every day from the gym. And I was like, I want to box too so bad. I want to box too. My mother was like, you know, this is just another sport you're going to do for two months. And you're probably gonna give it up because you, yeah, you know, it's gonna, you're gonna be bored because I tried out a lot of sports like basketball, tennis, athletics, you know. But as soon as I put on the boxing gloves for the very first time, I was like, this is it. I'm gonna stick with it. And it's 15 years now. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally understand where you're coming from. Yeah. And what, what were you like as a child? Oh, to be honest, I, I was a little troubled child. Like, I would always come home with bruises and injuries because I was, I was reckless. Like, I was fearless. I was playing outside and just do a lot of stupid shit, like climbing on trees, falling down, 
breaking my arms and stuff like that. My mother was always worried about me. Like she wouldn't let me out alone. She, I was, um, I always had to go out with my older brother so he, to make sure that he takes care of me. <laughs> Do you think that changed though when you started boxing and you were able to kind of quote unquote take care of yourself? Yes, of course. I mean, boxing humbled me a lot because I had so much energy and boxing made me like, made me calm down a lot over the years. I mean, some people think it's a very aggressive sport, which which is true, but it's so much more than just punching each other. It's, you have to be smart, you have to think, and you know, you have to, you have to fight with a technique and with tactics. And I think, yeah, boxing made me a better person, of course. What about in terms of your happiest, let's say, amateur moment, or the, the happiest moment in your amateur career? Um, this might sound a little bit corny, but my happiest moment, like, was when my grandfather, which is, he, which was a very, very strong and proud man, when he saw me fighting first, because he didn't like that I was boxing, because he was like, you know, he's old, he's like, yeah, you cannot box as a girl, but when he saw me, he was so proud, and he shed a tear, and this is, this is, to be honest, my favorite memory that I have. It's funny, isn't it? Because there are, you start off and, and some people in the family, they're, they're, they're a bit against it. They're, they're against women fighting. And then as soon as you kind of fight and show your guts and determination, they become so proud of you, don't they? Yes, it's like that. Also, my mother, she wasn't very pleased, but she's so proud now. She tells all her friends, when I'm fighting and she would come with her friends and she's super proud. I mean, anytime she's trying to record a video, it's very shaky because she's more excited than I am. But yeah, she's super proud of me because I found my way, I found my destination and yeah, she's, she's very proud of that. Yeah, that's great. Looking at some of your amateur fights, I mean, such a come forward, aggressive technical boxer as well. I mean, surely that was quite frightening for a lot of the girls that you were fighting against. Very strong, weren't you? Yes, that's true. You know, um, in the amateurs, we just had four rounds. Um, when I was fighting at the amateurs, we had four rounds each for two minutes. So you don't have any time to point out your opponent. So I just try to to smash him down, right? And yes, they were quite <laughs> strong. Because, um, <laughs> um, when I was competing at the amateurs, I was um, fighting at the lightweight division and I'm quite tall, so I was always taller than them and I was always quite lean and shredded. So they were just intimidated by my appearance, you know? Yes. <laughs> 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 yeah, I hear you. So you turn over pro. I mean, how different was that for you from being in the amateur scene? Yeah, actually, you know, when I was fighting at the amateurs, I was always like um, putting a lot of pressure with a high frequency of punches, right? And um, when I first, when I had to fight six rounds, I felt like I felt exhausted after round four because I was just doing the same thing that I did at the amateur, right? And so I had to change, I had to change my, my tactics. So the thing is, now I'm more stable, I'm a more stable fighter, and I'm focused on counter punching, like avoiding the punches and then counter back. And at the amateurs, I would just run through it. Like, like I would catch punches, receive, and you know, give punches, receive punches, and it was just like, do, 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 do. And yeah, no, it's, you have to be, I think you have to be way smarter because, for example, if you, if you fighting for a title fight, you have to fight 10 rounds and you cannot go, uh, you cannot go like that 10 rounds straight. You would be exhausted after round five or something. I mean, to be fair, they are two different sports, aren't they? Amateurs and pros. Uh, yes, yes, yes. And I, I'm guessing that you are strong. And I, <laughs> what made me laugh is like, I just got hit, shook it off. <laughs> yes, yes. And oh carried on God. going. Yes. You know, I was never afraid of receiving punches. So, um, yeah, I was never afraid to receive punches, which is quite good in boxing. <laughs> 
So, yeah, but um, of course, it's better not to get hit. <laughs> so I kind of um, try to um, improve my defense work, right? Because I nearly had any defense. I was very open when I punched. I didn't even raise my arm. So, yeah, now that's something we're focusing on. And yes. <laughs> That's great, though, that you're able to see and work on those things, because we all know that sometimes people are not open to uh, growing as an athlete. Yes. Do you know what I mean? So who would you say, other than Katharina, although she is an amazing person, who else are you the closest to on the professional uh, boxing scene? I'm training at the Sophie Arlesham. Um, I was born and raised in Frankfurt, but I moved out to Berlin last year to um, train over their gym. And um, I think I know Sophie for, I think, seven years now or something. I saw her at the amateurs when she started boxing because she was a tennis player. And I think it was the national championship or anything. And I was mesmerized by the very first second because she was, um, she was so young, but she has a dedication, which is admirable. So, I mean, she's just 19 years old. And I'm looking forward to see her grow because I think she's going to be a great athlete. Um, yeah, I see her every day. We're training alongside. She's a very cute girl. And, yeah, she's pretty much um, the, the one, yeah, that I'm closest to right now, besides Katarina, because she's a very good friend of mine. I do love this girl. <laughs> she's a talent. She's absolutely talented. And what's brilliant about that, though, is that you must be absorbing as well. You two, like, must be kind of uh, playing off each other. Yeah, you know, when, when it comes to sparring, we try to knock each other's head off. But after, after sparring, we just love each other. Yeah, because I think sometimes um, people mix up the business with friendship, you know? So, yeah, um, when I started fun with her, I was not afraid. I didn't want to hurt her, and she didn't want to hurt me, but, you know, the job has to be done. And I was uh, with her when she was preparing for the Terry Harper fight, and I was like, yeah, I have to go seriously, because otherwise I'm not going to help her, you know? So, yeah, um, she's very dedicated. Um, she's a strong athlete and actually I've never received a stronger punch than she did like she almost knocked me out with her right cross her right cross is tremendous it's, <laughs> it's crazy do you know what's funny uh, about that though as well she looks really sweet and innocent though as, as well <laughs> oh my god yeah she looks innocent but she's not let me tell you she's not She's very strong. She's very strong. <laughs> you must have been watching what's going on over here in the UK in terms of, you know, all the females seem to be getting such a light shone on, on them at the moment. Um, is that encouraging for you? Is the same thing happening in Germany? You know, what's going on? I think in Germany, of course, um, more work has to be done. Um, I was super excited about the... Um, about the event that Metro made up when uh, Katie Taylor was like um, um, was the main event next to Terry uh, Terry Hoffman, Katarina Thunders and also Rachel Ball. Um, I think it's just fair to give women the same um, yeah the same how do you say that like opportunities um, the same publicity yes. that men that matters because many female fighters are way better and way harder than men are, you know. Because sometimes when I see like the, the pre fight, um, I don't know, I never heard the names of the male boxers, and it looks like they started boxing two weeks ago or something like that, and they are spent on the TV while women that well, even competing at the Olympics are not even shown on the TV. So, yeah, I think it was it was time. Yeah. Do you know what? Um, 
I agree with you. And I um, interviewed two Olympians last week. And what was really shocking about that is the, um, the, the lack of views that these two females, yeah. I mean, they're phenomenal fighters. Yeah. And I'm just like, and even then what happens a lot of the time in the amateurs is everybody only jumps on the bandwagon when there's a, you know, an Olympics or a, a, a world championships or a Europeans. And these fights are amazing, you know, week in, yeah. week out, aren't they? Yeah. Bob Arum, um, I think it was last week, was saying that he's going to petition for three-minute rounds. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on the three-minute round debate? I do agree with Bob Arum because he says it lacks the women's boxing because of the three minutes wrong, right? Because most of the time, it's the third, it's the third minute that's the most exciting one. Because... Um, um, I even made the experience myself. Um, I was boxing, you know, it kind of feels like as soon as we warm up, the round is already over. You know what I mean? So um, I, I've i made the experience a couple of times, like um, I was sitting here with a strong hand and they started calling her out, but she was safe by the bell. And you know, one minute recovery, which is quite a lot, is enough to build like a whole new concept. Or um, I can tell some of my opponents were safe by the bell. And also, I think it was Michaela Maya, which um, always has taken strong uh, a strong stance regarding uh, the way female fighters are treated. And she also wants um, women to compete three minutes. And I do agree with her because, I mean, we're strong enough to do it. Yeah. Personally, I don't have a problem with it the females are definitely strong enough to do it. For me, it's about whether, uh, number one, you ladies are going to get paid for fighting three-minute yeah. rounds. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think the the debate that should be having should be had first is about money and being paid yeah. equally. I mean, women boxing is underpaid. We all know that. I mean, boxing in common, like, is underpaid. You know, while some people receive 120 million boxing YouTubers, some of us don't. It's like for me, I had to pay, I like, I had to pay my first opponent because I didn't even have a sponsor, you know? And yet, sometimes I really doubt my whole career because I'm like, how is this even possible? Like, you know, some of them are rich by doing a show and, you know, I live for that each day and I'm suffering and I miss out on parties, on birthdays. And, you know, I don't get paid. So, yeah, sometimes it's quite hard. Eat, like, um, especially for us women boxers, you know, it's crazy. You have to love this sport, don't you? Because, let's be honest, <laughs> you don't go into female boxing. I hate to call it that, but there is a disparity at the moment with regard to being paid. You don't go into the sport necessarily to make money, do you? No, um, I was never money oriented. Like my, I was raised by a single mother, and we never had a lot of money, so I'm kind of used to that. So I, no, I'm not looking for the money. I know, um, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna get money one day. Not for now, but, you know, just the thought of um, achieving my goals and become the best in my weight division gives me so much energy. So I don't, I don't, I don't even need money. Um, as soon as, um, um, as long as I'm able to pay my rent and fill my fridge, I'm totally fine. Well, we want you to earn money. We want you to earn loads of money. So listen. Uh, um, the 7th of July, that's correct, isn't it? The 7th of July, you're out. I mean, please, God, listen, I hope you get, um, because I'm presuming you haven't got any sponsorship at the moment. I hope you get number one sponsorship. Um, I'm wishing you literally all the best in your career because this is just the beginning, I feel, for you. Thanks ever so much for giving us your time. Thank you.